Hey, everybody. Let's see. Rob, I'm going to unmute you. Rob, you are unmuted. Rob Welch. Thank you. How are you today? Good. I just wanted to see if you could hear me okay. <laughs> I can. You can hear me good? Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Very cool. So I'm going to go ahead and mute you again, and then I'm going to get started just in a couple minutes. So, because uh, there's going right. to be 300 plus people on here. And uh, it'll be very cool. I appreciate you doing this. You bet. You bet. So, where did you go? Go ahead and mute yourself because you're already buried. I can't find you. Thank you. All right. So what I do is we'll get this going in just a couple minutes. We're going to let some people get loaded up here. So far, we're over 300 people that registered for this. I know uh, for you syndicate members or accelerator members, the RTA syndicate or RTA uh, accelerator members, if you don't know what that means, uh, that's okay. If you guys are on here, I, um, I, perp I tried to not do this around the RTA call, but this is what happened. So I'm going to be doing a Facebook Live here in a little bit for the RTA members. So if you're on now, don't miss Andy Priscilla and Ed Milet's call with us. Uh, I got to catch it on replay. So just go ahead and just log off and get on the call with the RTA guys. And then I'm going to do the Facebook Live for all the RTA people as soon as I get done here. With that said, today I'm going to go about 45 minutes. So I'm going to start at 5 p.m. Pacific. And uh, I'm going to go about 45 minutes. Don't have a lot of time for Q&A because I got to get on that call right after that. So, But I think I'm going to give you guys enough information that uh, you will be able to uh, apply for the loan. I'm going to show you guys how to apply for the loan the grant that is, is called a loan, but uh, we all know that it will turn into a grant uh, for most people. Let me see what the chat is. Okay, so here's the uh, thing with this, guys. It's just me. I don't have any moderators. I don't have any other participants. Uh, like I said on the Facebook Live and the Instagram Live today, uh, I did this call this morning with the SBA. This is not my business. I help some people with SBA loans, but that's not my specialty. My specialty is credit and taxes. So I'm going to give you my best that based on the information that I have. All right. So you won't work. How do I mute everybody? I'm supposed to mute everybody. So if you guys could, if you log on, hit the mute button. Um, it's supposed to auto mute everybody. There, perfect. Okay. So as soon as it hit, hits six o'clock mountain or five o'clock Pacific, I'll get started. Okay, I gotta figure out how to mute everybody. It's supposed to already have done that. But it hasn't. There's everybody. That's a cool view. Cool. Good to see you guys all on here. I think everybody's muted. I think I got yes. All right. Let's get started. Enough of this. Okay, so in case you don't know who I am or you don't follow me, maybe follow me a little bit. I'm Rondi Lamb, CEO of Fortress Credit Pro, America's first paid on results credit repair company. Um, I'm arguably one of the best credit experts in America. That's primarily what I specialize in, but I also do uh, business credit and I also do tax consulting, business coaching, and uh, I purchase apartment complexes. So I'm very involved in business. I have five businesses myself. And then I also belong to a couple of very high end, in Andy Purcella's words, not masterminds, uh, but I'm involved with some really high end groups. And one of those is board of advisors. This morning on our board of advisors call, uh, we had an SBA specialist who's also a lobbyist, who also works for the governor of Georgia. And he got on the call for us members to share with us what is really going on with these SBA loans, what's going on with COVID-19 and the disaster plans and the grants. So thought I'd get out and share that with you guys. Again, for the record, I am not an SBA specialist. 
I help people with SBA loans by referring you to my, one of my partners who specializes in SBA loans. This is not a sales pitch for him. Quite frankly, he can't, uh, I talked to him before this call, he can't take any applications with a couple exceptions. Exceptions are this. You gotta make at least a million dollars a year. So you gotta be grossing over a million dollars. You gotta have three years tax returns, cannot be a felon, can have never defaulted on any type of federal loan, and you gotta have a 680 credit score. So if you gross over a million dollars, you have three years tax returns, are not a felon, have a 680 credit score, and have never defaulted on a student loan, a mortgage, of any type of federal loan, then reach out to me and I'll put you in touch with Vladimir. Other than that, there is no sales pitch. I don't make any money from it, but uh, we're already processing 100 applications a day for SBAs, and I'm just sharing this stuff because it's really not that hard if you have the time, which uh, most of you probably have the time to do it. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm literally working about 16 to 18 hours a day. We've hired nine people in the last four days. We're going to hire 500 people by the end of the year. If you guys are interested in what we're doing to expand, let me know on Instagram or Facebook, and I'll get you invited on a Zoom, how we are, uh, some of my partners, Ed Milet, uh, John Elway, Damon John, Marshall Falk, and some other big names, how we teamed up together to create a financial services company that's changing the, the face of the planet right now. So again, I'm not an SBA specialist. I'm probably going to screw something up tonight. I can refer you to one if you qualify for those loans, like, like I said earlier. Let me turn, turn off my mail real quick, okay? Okay, with that being said, let me share the slides with you. It's this one here. All right. Um, I'm going to unmute you Chris Collins just for a second because I see you here um, again I haven't used slack or I mean uh, zoom in such a long time I want to make sure that this is good you are unmuted Chris can you see that okay the yeah. federal action yeah I can see your I can see you're sharing your screen there no problem cool all right I gotta put these silly glasses on so go ahead and mute yourself again in case someone comes in all right so Here's what's going on with, with Congress. Government's finally got something right. Usually they screw things up. If you follow me at all, you know I'm not a big fan of big government. I am a libertarian, but not the crazy Tiger King, if you know what I'm talking about, libertarian. Uh, I just don't believe in big government. So the CARES Act is phase three of Congress' response to the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, Phase one was $8.3 billion in response for development of vaccine. We come along March 6th. Phase two is $100 billion in worker assistance, paid sick leave, food assistance, unemployment insurance. That again become law March 18th. And then phase three is roughly $2 trillion stimulus package, loans to support small businesses, grants, direct payments to families, and it become law as of March 27th, so five days ago. They are already talking about, as of this morning, they're already talking about, as they get this rolling, phase four coming out, which is gonna be an additional trillion dollars, which will be used for small business. To give you an idea of what small business means in the government's eyes, Small business is any business that has less than 500 employees. So if you got 499 employees, including yourself, you are what the government calls a small business. Small businesses are extremely critical to our economy. And the reason I'm sharing this with you, again, I'm not trying to sell you guys anything at all. I fix people's credit. I show businesses how to get business credit and I buy apartment complexes. So I help show people how to create wealth, how to grow their wealth and how to keep their wealth. That, that's what I do. This is just a slide just so I can stay on track to show you guys the whole plan and why this is so important. And really what, what is going on with this? Uh, a couple of days ago, I reached out to uh, Michelle, who's my ex-wife and I texted her and said, Hey, 
there's $10,000 you can get right now. It took me less than a minute to fill out the application you wanted. Uh, her response was, that's a scam. And I said, it's not a scam. It's, you know, and, and she thought it was a scam because there's lots of scams out there. And that's why I want to go through this so you guys know this is not a scam. The government has to do this. If they don't do this, um, our world will fall apart. And I'm going to break it down why they have to do this. So there are nearly, uh, there's actually over 30 million small businesses in America. It's 99.9% .9 of all businesses. 77 million Americans are employed by small businesses. I'm a small business. Everybody on this call, with exception uh, to maybe Andy Fursella that I know it has a small business. I kind of have a couple other friends that have larger than more than 500 employees, but not very many people. Okay. Small businesses make America run. They pay 47% of all payroll taxes in America. 47%. They create 70% of all of the new jobs every single year. It's not government that creates jobs, it's small businesses. Here's a scary thing. If businesses are required to shut down for more than 10 days, which we've already experienced, 48% of small businesses will not reopen. If we are made to shut down for more than 30 days, 72% of all small businesses will not reopen. Think about that for a little bit. If 77 million jobs are from small businesses and 72% of all the businesses do not reopen, I don't know what the math is on that, but I think it's around 55, 56 million people will be out of a job. This is why they're throwing trillions of dollars at this. And right now it's $350 billion. But like I said, as of the call this morning, they're saying they're gonna throw another trillion dollars at it in the next few weeks because they have to do this. If they don't do it, everything falls apart. So that's why the government is doing this. It is not a hoax. It is not a freaking way to um, turn us into socialists. It is not a way to do the, what's that silly movie? That, not, not silly, the, um, the movie that came out a little bit ago, I, I saw, I just forgot the name of it, but there's a movie where uh, the rich lord over the poor people and they fight every year for whatever that movie's called. Um, that's not what they're trying to do. They're, they're not trying to trap small businesses into slavery or anything like that. Hunger Games. They're not trying to do the Hunger Games, all right? What they're trying to do is they're trying to keep businesses working. Because if 72% of businesses go out, which is 47% of all taxes paid in America, our world crashes. Okay, so they're coming up with ways to, to make sure we stay in business. Donald Trump said this the other day, we are deeply committed to ensuring that small businesses have the support they require. Here's one of the things that they're doing. According to the SBA guy this morning, they are literally making this up as they go. They don't know the guidelines. You don't have to have your taxes done completely. You don't have to have all your finances done. There's no personal guarantees. There's no credit checks. Um, and, and how they're able to do this is they're using numbers from the past. So you can't go in and change what you've already done. So they're using all the numbers from the past. So it's going to cut out most of the fraud. And so they're letting things go through fairly quickly. President Trump is committed to push it through. One of the things he did this morning was they had created this for anyone up to 250,000. They, he dropped it down to a hundred thousand because he doesn't want big business to get bailed out. So this is it. The EIDL, which is the economic injury disaster loans. The purpose of this, again, is to keep small businesses working. This slide was created yesterday. This is how fast 
this is changing and how much it's changing. As of yesterday morning, it said loans were up to $2 million at 3.75% interest. As of this morning, it's $10 million at half a percent interest. This is how scared the government is, and this is how committed the government is to make sure small businesses like yours, like mine, stay around. Okay? So you can get loans up to $10 million down to as little as a half a percent interest, and then on top of that, most of this stuff is gonna be forgivable, and I'll get into what that means on the forgivability of it. These loans are not for marketing. They are not for advertising. They are not to buy a new jet. They're not to buy a new car. That stuff's coming though. I promise you that stuff's coming. These are for payroll. These are for rent for your office building. These are for your mortgage if you own your office building. These are for health insurance for your employees. This is for your pension plans for your employees your matches for your 401ks, et cetera. Where do you go to get this? SBA.gov. That's SBA.gov, and I'll pull that up in a little bit to show you what it looks like. Okay, let me minimize this thing here. Again, these are SBA loans are up to two million. It, the, it already changed, by the way. It's 10 million. Um, and, and again, it keeps changing so much. So I, will, I cannot stress enough, I am not an SBA expert. I simply can refer you to my team members and they do it. This is changing so much that as of this morning when I was on the call with the SBA, it changed again in that 45 minutes. And so he had to stop at the end. He's like, hey, it just changed again. The good news is it's changing for us. So when they make the changes, it's usually to make it easier for us to get the money. For example, a week ago, when you did this loan application, which I'm getting ready to show you, um, it took over six hours for one of my buddies to do it. And he's got a law degree, or he's got a um, master's, bachelor's master's degree in tax over six hours. I did it in less than a minute. A few minutes ago, I did it for another one of my companies. Less than one minute, I had the application filled out and done. Okay. So they're, they're streamlining it. The changes are making it easier for us, not harder. So right now, um, $2 million immediately on this, $200,000 without a personal guarantee. What does that mean? You don't have to personal guarantee it, which means they can't sue you. These are also non-recourse loans. No personal guarantee means if you don't pay back this money, they're not gonna report it to your credit file. You get a $2 million, think about that. $2 million loan, if you don't pay it, they don't sue you, they don't attempt to collect it, they don't put it on your credit report. They're, it's it's kind of what Harp did for AIG and all the big boys. They're now, Trump's doing it for all the little people. The SBA, and this changed, again, this morning, this changed. This, if you do do, if you do do, if you do the big loan, the 10 million, it's amortized over 30 years. Interest rates went from 3.75. They're actually down to a half a percent right now. That changed this morning. Proof of economic impact is required on these big loans. How do you prove it? I mean, my, my income is down 30 grand just, just in a lot of, matter of a few weeks. And I'm not even shut down. But that's just the clients not paying me. So I'll, it's pretty easy to prove it. You can profit and loss from January, February, March. So it's not like it has to be um, all of these certified documents. Now, you're not going to cheat, but they're making it pretty easy to get this. The first month's payments, uh, this come out, it's actually deferred for one year up to January of 2021. That's what they're saying. If you're approved for this loan, you won't have a payment until January. Here's what all of you qualify for. Um, or should, is the $10,000 emergency grant cash advance. That's what I'm gonna show you here in a little bit, how to apply for this and how to get started on it. They're gonna issue you $10,000. Who qualifies? Any business owner in America. If you drove for Uber, you qualify. If you clean houses, 
and you file a tax return and you claim that income, you qualify. I had someone ask me, and I, I can't believe this, but this dude reached out to me earlier and uh, he makes most of his money selling pot here in Idaho, selling marijuana in Idaho. He's like, hey man, do I qualify for this? I'm like, no, you don't qualify for that. If you're doing illegal shit to make your money, you're not filing taxes, you don't qualify. If you file taxes and you include your cash stuff, you qualify. So if you clean houses, you qualify. If you pick up dog poop, you qualify. If you empty trash cans like my seven-year-old grandson, you qualify because he's got a real business and he files a tax return at seven years old. You qualify. Drive for Uber, Uber Eats, uh, Postmates. Uh, you deliver pizza for Domino's and they 1099 you. Any, if you get a 1099 or a K-1 or you file a tax return as a small business, you qualify. You do not need to be incorporated. You don't need to have a business license. You don't have to be registered with the state. If you make money outside of a W-2 income or Social Security, someone asked me earlier, I'm on Social Security, do I qualify? Not if you don't have a business, okay? If you're any of those other things, you qualify for the SBA $10,000 cash advance. And it's a grant. It's going to be forgiven. Most of these loans are also going to be forgiven. I'll explain it later how. The PPP. This is Payroll Protection Program. This is for people that have employees less than 500. So proprietors, self-employed, freelance, your Ubers, your Dominoes, those kind of things also apply as long as they're 1099s. Max loans, $10 million or 2.5, 2 point times of the average payroll cost. And I'll break down what that means for all of you that have employees. It covers wages up to $100,000. So if you are on salary, you, you pay yourself 700 grand a year, it covers the first hundred thousand. If you got an executive and you pay him two hundred fifty grand a year, it covers the first hundred thousand. Remember, I said Trump changed it. It was two fifty this morning. He come in and he said, "No, I, I want this to be for small business." Yes, you can be a small business and make a couple million dollars a year on salary. He doesn't, he's not trying to give that money to those people because they're going to give this money to you. It's a loan because they're trying to figure out all the requirements, but it essentially it's, it, it will eventually become a grant. Okay? So $10 million or 2.5 times your average monthly payroll cost. And I'll get over that next slide. I'll get, uh, I will go over what that means. Covers paid sick leave, health care, and other benefits, 10 year loan. 4% interest. Again, that changed this morning. Check this out. This is a $10 million loan. No personal guarantee. No collateral. No proof of economic impact. Payments are deferred until January 1st of next year. Part of the loan is forgivable as long as you use it to pay your employees healthcare, rent, mortgages, utilities, retirement, or any of your other benefit programs that you offer through your company. So you got a restaurant, you got wait staff, doc, um, chefs, cooks, whatever, dishwashers. You keep them on payroll, you get this loan, keep them paying, it's forgivable. If you get the loan and you don't give that money to your employees, you lay them all off, you're gonna to have to pay it back. Okay, this is not for you to get rich, take advantage of it, this is literally for your employees. Then we have state programs. If you live in any of these oranges, so Oregon, California, Colorado, Illinois, and New York. New York's up to $75,000 grants and loans. San Francisco, if you live in, inside San Francisco, it's $10,000. LA's $25,000, Florida's $50,000. Uh, these are funding in about 72 hours. Uh, Nevada, I, live in, I live in Idaho, but my company's in Nevada. We don't have anything for Idaho yet. We don't have anything for Nevada yet. 
it's coming though, all right? So these are state and, and local entities that are giving out grants and loans. Inside uh, the CARE Act, there are billions of dollars set aside to give to the states and let the states come up with their own programs. So if you're in one of these states and it's not there yet, check back, because it probably will be, okay? Like I said, New York's $75,000, Florida's 50. I had a friend that applied for this on Monday, he got it today, it's $50,000. Super easy to fill out. All right, so how do you get the PPP loans? Here's how it's set up. It is the summary of your payroll costs. So salary, yours included, wages, commissions, cash, tips. If you have a restaurant and your employees are used to getting cash tips, right? It's severance pay. Vacation time, parental leave, family leave, medical leave, sick leave. Group benefits for health insurance or retirement, and then local compensation taxes. So for example, where uh, Nevada, where we don't have taxes, um, I have to pay sales tax on everything that I've ever bought, 6% every single year. If I buy it, so three years ago, I bought 30 different Apple computers, and every year since then, I paid another 6% every single year. My company, I'm shutting it down almost. As soon as I get through this, I'm actually shutting down my Nevada corporation because I am tired of paying sales tax and employee tax and all this other garbage on shit that I've already bought and pay taxes on. But anyway, you take all of that stuff and you combine it. Then you subtract out any salaries above $100,000. So again, if you're on salary for 250, it'll cover your first 100, okay? Cannot include people outside of the United States or not US residents. So for example, if you're using a call center in the Philippines, you can't include that. If you um, are using assistance in freaking India for tech support, you can't include that. Puerto Rico, we're not really sure yet. If you got a green card or your people have green cards and they're permanent residents, yes. Puerto Rico is kind of up in the air. I'm gonna guess that Puerto Rico is gonna qualify as well. If you have anybody in Puerto Rico, it's still a crazy town down there. Then you take the average payroll divided by 12 times 2.5. Let me break it down for you. Then I'm gonna show you how to break it down and then I'm gonna go over this. If you use this loan to pay payroll, rent, interest on your mortgage if you own the building, utilities, tips, you gotta use at least 75%. So let's say they give you $100,000. As long as you use 75% or 75 grand of that on payroll, rent, health insurance, life insurance, retirement plans, wages, you use 75% of that for your employees, completely forgiven. You don't have to pay it back. It is literally a grant. It's not free money. Why is it not free? Because it's your money, you put it into the system. I pay hundreds of thousands of dollars in, in payroll taxes every year. It, the government's just giving me back some of my money. If you do not spend that on your employees and you simply put it in your pocket, it's gonna turn into a loan and you're gonna have to pay it back at a half a percent interest. Maximum rate, 4%, right now it's half, half a percent. So here's what you do. You get the loan, let's say you get $100,000. You put it in a bank account and your payroll from this point forward, April 1st forward, is paid out of that account. Your rent's paid out of that, your mortgage is paid out of it, your utilities is paid out of it, your health insurance, your life insurance, your retirement plans is paid out of that account. You still have money coming in from other clients. You use that money that you still have coming in for, man, for marketing, to expand, to buy other companies when they go out, to buy real estate, because you use the money that you get on the SBA to pay your payroll for the next two months. The money that's still coming in, you use that 
to go and expand your business. As long as you do that, the debt's 100% forgiven. Never have to pay it back. Up to $10 million. Okay, here's how it works. I'm going through this as fast as I can so I can answer questions. Uh, we got like 16 minutes to go. If this is how you figure out how much you qualify, you take your payroll costs. So your owner's wages, 250 grand. Now, this is just an example. This is not me. This is just an example. 250 grand. Employee wages, 180 grand. 1099. 1099 counts. So if you got 1099 contra contractors, you got salespeople, anything is, you got, tech support that's in the United States, that all counts, okay? 330,000 for 1099, $4,000 for severance pay. So you had to lay someone off two weeks ago, but you gave them a severance pay, they get it. I'll give you a good example. I had one of my employees steal from me. They're charging him with the felony. He stole seven years worth of my intellectual property, started his own credit repair company. Complete dirt bag. If you follow me on social media, you know who he is because he's on a bunch of videos with me. Complete dirtbag. I wanted this whole thing to go away. He's filed a lawsuit against me. I'm in the middle of buying an apartment complex I, and trying to get some other loans. I can't have lawsuits against me. Even though he stole from me, I was like, what's it going to take to make you go away, to make this thing go away? It was 30 grand. So I wrote him a check for roughly $30,000. I get to include that in this because it's severance pay. Even though he quit, and he broke into my office and stole my stuff. I still had to pay him 30 grand to make it go away because I was also going through divorce at the time. I just wanted it all over with. That counts. So if you have an employee that you had to let off or fire because they stole from you or they just didn't do a good job, anywhere from February of 2019 to February 2020, you get to include that in there. Okay. 401k contributions, Roth IRAs, SEP IRAs. Pension plans, uh, defined benefit plans. If you don't know what that is, you probably don't have one. If you got one, it's included. So you take that. So in this case, it's $932,000. Excluded. Remember, you can only include $100,000 of the owner wages. So you take out 150 grand. Take out 150 grand, it's $782,000. That is what the payroll cost is. $782,000. Divided by 12 months, that's $65,000 per month, right? So you take all of your costs, exclude anything over 100 grand for the owner, nothing else, just the owner's costs, and other employees that get over 100 grand. In this case, only the owner got over 100 grand. Subtract that out, divide it by 12, that's $65,000 times 2.5. In this case is a $163,000 loan. As long, and this could be you, $163,000, it's sent to you within about seven days. You get it, you get your money. As long as you take that $163,000, this is a key, and you pay payroll with it, or life insurance, health insurance, retirement plans, over the next two months, it's 100% forgivable. So all you got to do is use that money to pay your employees. If you took the money and then you laid everybody off, you're going to have to pay the money back. It's not going to be forgivable, right? Which one's right for you? You can't do both. You got to do one or the other. So the PPP loan or the EIDL loan. PPP is forgivable, easy paperwork, no collateral, fast payment, but limited. That's 2.5. The EIDL, non-forgivable, it's about six hours to do the paperwork. Um, and and it's, it's not that hard, but let's say, let's say you're an Uber driver. You're not going to qualify for PPP. Or you're a, dry, uh, a house cleaner. You're not going to qualify for PPP. So you go with the EIDL, okay? What to do now? You need three years tax returns. If you do not have 2019 taxes like I don't, they are accepted financials, okay? Got to have the owner's tax returns as well. Again, they'll take financials. If you're an owner, you can use your K-1. I fill out your debt schedule. You should have a profit and loss for your business already. Calculate it times 12 or K-1 
calculate it, divided by 12, 2.5, fill out the SBA application. Okay, so let me show you where you go. And I know you guys got a bunch of questions, so I'm gonna pop this up real quick. Go to sba.gov. Like I said, oh, I need to share in his pause. I need to make sure. Okay. Make sure it's still shared. Where's the little green light? You're good to go. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Tanner. <clears throat> All right, so here's where you go. Go right here, click on that little box right there. It literally took me less than a minute. I've done this four times now. The first one was about two and a half minutes. The other three times were like literally, no exaggeration whatsoever, less than 60 seconds. Most of us under 500, applicant, 500 employees, go down here. For me, everything was no, I'm not cheating, I'm not felony, blah, blah, blah. I hit next. You fill out the information, put in your EIN number or social security number if you're a sole proprietor. You fill this out. You need to know your gross revenue and you need to know cost of goods. If you're in real estate, then you got to fill out this stuff here, right? If you're not in real estate, don't have to worry about it. And then you hit the next button, which I can't get to the next button. The next one's going to be business information, your name, your address, email address, social security number, date of birth. Then they're gonna ask you, would you like the $10,000 immediately? Yes or no? If you click the box yes, it asks for your bank account routing number. If you click no, you hit submit. When you hit submit, this is what you get. Is this it? Boom, there it is, your application number. All right, it is literally, oh, you guys can't see that, so let me show you. This is what it looks like. Here's your application number. Goes in. Here's the thing. This is first come, first serve. When they run out of money, they run out of money. Connecticut opened up, and before the end of the day, they ran out through their billions of their uh, millions of dollars because they had uh, thirty million dollars or something. They're gone. Uh, Michigan was like twenty, if I remember right, twenty million dollars. They're already at sixteen million. They're done. They're probably done by now. That was this morning. I don't know where Florida's at. I don't know where California's at. So you got to check with your own state. Uh, basically, go to Google, type in uh, your state treasurer. That's where you're finding is the treasurer's office. All right. Again, these are state SBAs for those, but this this one that I just showed you is for the federal stuff. Pretty simple. What happens if you don't get the loan? Well, you get the grant. That's what happens with it. The money must be used for your business, guys. This is not to put money in your pocket. The smallest loan you're going to get is $500 for if you're an Uber driver, like my son drove for Uber Eats. Maybe he gets a thousand bucks. You use that for your gas, your insurance, whatever, for your business, right? And then you got to pay it back. If it gets forgiven, it gets forgiven. If it doesn't, it's a half a percent interest. Most of them are two years on the small stuff. Some of them go up to 10 years, that big $10 million PPP, which comes out on Friday morning, that's $10 million up to 30 years. Again, no collateral, no personal guarantee, non-recourse loans, most of them are forgivable. Why are they doing it? Because there's about 50 million jobs relying on this. That's why they're doing it. Okay, so I finished that. Let's see if I can answer, open this up for questions for you guys, because I see a bunch of chats. Uh, yeah, I don't know about Texas. How'd that work for a postal contractor played by another company? Hey, you know, if it's 1099, it's 1099. You know, I've been saying this for years. You're not a small business owner. You need to be. You need to become a small business owner. Come up with something, man. Start picking up dog poop if you need to. I, I've been talking about that a lot because I, I'm doing 75 hard. I see the dog poop van driving around my neighborhood. Whatever you got to do to start your own business, then start it. Okay. All right. Uh, so postal worker, if you get a 1099, you should qualify. I mean, if, if Uber qualifies, then the postal worker should qualify. If you're W-2 only, you're, you're not going to qualify for this. You get unemployment insurance and all the other stuff. Uh, I don't know if you're – someone says, what if you're a felon? Uh, 
then you can't do the SBA loans. You might be able to get the, the EIDL um, grant. I mean, there's, there was nowhere on there that said anything about, um, I don't remember seeing anything that if I was a felon. And again, I'm not an SBA specialist, so maybe I missed it. But I know on our SBA 7 program, you can't be a felon. But I don't know about the EIDL or PPP. But look on the website, and if it says you can't do it if you're a felon, then that's the answer. Uh, trade name and the application. Uh, trade name is whatever you go by. So, for example, my company is Fortress Inc. That is the name of my corporation, but I go by Fortress Credit Pro or Fortress Credit Professional. So the incorporated is what your legal name is. For example, Rob Welsh is on here. I'm assuming his legal name is Robert, but he goes by Rob. Josh Wilson's on here. I'm assuming his legal name is Joshua, but he goes by Josh, okay? Um, so that's what trade names, DBAs, those are nicknames. Your legal name is whatever your articles of incorporation say. If you're not an S Corp or C Corp, then it's Steve Stroud, whatever it is, okay? If you're a sole proprietor, like my son, Indy, who drives for Uber Eats, he doesn't have a corporation or LLC. He, it's just Indiana Lambda. That's who they issue the check to, right? So you don't, you, again, you do not have to be a registered, licensed, bonded company. You got to file tax returns outside of W-2 income, okay? Uh, the county check on the status of your loan, they're going to get in touch with you. They'll reach out to you. I didn't go over it. There's not very many people. The SBA, the government's, there's like 1,800 approved branches in America. They're adding 400 more today. There's only 700 registered approved SBA specialists or underwriters. They're adding more to that. Here's the other thing. Don't wait too long on this. Hurricane season's coming. And when hurricane season comes, they're not going to be dealing with this stuff. So you want to get on this as soon as you can. Um, everybody should apply for the 10000 They're going to figure it out based on your revenue. If you put in that you made $3,000 last year as an Uber driver, you're not going to get $10,000, all right? The, the minimum they'll give you is $500. Uh, how long you got to be in business? 2019. So as long as you're in business prior to February, uh, I'm sorry, as long as you're in business after February 1st, 2019, before February 2020, you're good. Uh, so that should answer your question, Rob. Again, on some of these big SBA loans, you need three years tax returns. They're not going to give you $10 million if you just started your business a couple months ago. You can get the grant money and some of this emergency assistance, even if you just, you know, if you're a year old or two years old, you're not going to get the $10 million loan if you're only two years old. Okay. So it'll change. And again, they are changing the stuff on the fly. Um, how do you add a new 1099 if it's, I don't know what that means if it's not consistent. Uh, S Corp not working, owner, operator, truck driver. That qualifies. If Uber drop qualifies, Uber Eats qualifies, house cleaner qualifies, truck driver qualifies. Uh, sole proprietor, somebody says, can they include the mortgage utilities? Um, only if you include that on your tax returns. So if you, you know, for example, in my house right now, I have two offices. I'm in one right now. I deduct this office space. I deduct part of my rent, my utilities, my internet, my trash, my water, my sewer. I deduct all that. If I deduct it, I get to include it. If you don't deduct it, you can't include it. Most likely, if you're sole proprietor, you're not going to qualify for the PPP loan. In fact, I can almost guarantee you won't because you won't have employees. So that doesn't, that's irrelevant anyway. You'll qualify for the EIDL loan or the EIDL grant. Uh, how does it work for real estate investors? Uh, you fill out that loan, the EIDL. You're not going to do the PPP. PPP is only for people that have employees. It's called the Payroll Protection Program. So PPP up to the 10 million or 2.5 months, that's for people with employees. If you don't have employees, you don't get that loan. You get the EIDL. Does that make sense? So PPP up to 10 million or 2.5 months is for people with employees, EIDL, which I'm assuming is most of you, 
is going to be your best option. The idea, which is what I was just showing you. The PPP, you can't even apply for it yet. It doesn't go live until Monday morning. I mean, um, Friday morning. Okay, so most of you can do the SBA tonight under the EIDL. Make sure your numbers are accurate. Don't just throw shit up in there. Look at your profit and loss. Look at what, you know, how much money come in to your bank account and put the real numbers in. Uh, listing 75% is forgivable, but not the other 25%. Here's the thing is if you, if 75% right now is gonna be forgivable. What they said on the call today, is most likely all of it will be forgivable or at half a percent. Here's the other thing, guys. If you are an employer and you have payroll, you don't have to pay payroll taxes to the end of the year at all. So that, that saves a bunch of money. The other thing you can do, if you're worried about paying rent, most states have issued a moratorium that they can't evict you. Uh, Wells Fargo just sent me a thing because I bank with them. I'm a business banker or I have a business account. Uh, they're not doing foreclosures. They're not doing repos on cars. They're not making people pay credit cards. Just call them. American Express is going to be in an automatic 90-day window. No interest, no fees, no penalties. They're not going to report it on your credit report. You're fine. If, however, they do it like they do the hurricane disaster areas, a lot of those, like mortgages, for example, they let you skip a month or two or three on hurricanes. It's usually three months. On the fourth month, all four months is due. So if you can make your payments, continue to make your payments. Do not skip them and go party with it. Make your payments. If you can't make the payments, that's a completely different story. If that's the case, call them, work something out. They're willing to work with you uh, because there's going to be some bailout money for them as well. Uh, I don't know if you get the $10,000 grant if you didn't work in 2019. I'm going to assume no. That's just my guess. I don't know. Fill out the application and, and figure it out. Someone says they owe taxes. Can I use the money for that? Um, hey, here's the deal. If you use the money, the PPP, Again, if you're a small business with no employees, the PPP doesn't apply to you. It's the EIDL. The EIDL doesn't have the 75% rule to it. It is most likely going to be a grant. They are, they are literally calling it a grant with loan aspects to where they're giving you the 10,000 or up to the 10,000 if you're not approved. So they're giving you the 10,000 and they're working on the loan stuff. If you don't get approved for the loan, you keep the 10,000. Or in my son's case, he's not gonna get 10 grand because I don't think he made, I don't know how much he made last year, but I'm assuming he won't get the full 10,000 as an Uber Eats driver. Maybe he will, I don't know his personal finances. If you owe taxes, use that EIDL money for whatever you want. There's no restrictions on the EIDL, what you can use it for. It's only on the PPP, which is forgivable if you use it for payroll. The EIDL, use it for anything you want. I would use it for, you know, staying afloat and making sure things go right. But you can use it for your tax if you want. Here's another thing, guys. Right now, you can pull up to $200,000 out of your 401k or IRA with no penalties. No taxes, no penalties. You get two years to pay it back. Two years or maybe it's three years. Shit keeps changing so fast, I can't remember. I think it's... I know it's at least two years, possibly three. So what's that mean? You got a couple hundred grand in your 401k. You got laid off. You're a, a W-2 employee, which is probably not any of you, but maybe it is. Maybe you got a small business on the side or you have family members. You can tell them this. They got laid off. They don't have any money because their employer's not paying them. They can pull a hundred grand out of their 401k, tax-free, penalty-free, they get two to three years to pay it back, and they can live off of that. Now, that is like the last thing you should possibly, if, it, if that's what's going to keep you out of bankruptcy, then do it. But the stock market is so low, you don't want to be pulling money out of your 401k right now. But 
if that's your last option, then that is an option, and there is no penalties on that. Okay. Uh, nonprofit. I, I don't know anything about nonprofit, so I can't really. I, I can't talk about that. I, I'm. I know in the on the application to talk about nonprofits, so I would like to talk about. I, I just don't know. If you only have two employees, if you're an S corp or two employees, um, figure out your math. It might be better to get the EIDL loan versus the PPP loan. Again, the PPP does not apply until Friday morning. EIDL is right now. Like you literally could be filling it out right now. So uh, you cannot get both EIDL and PP, PPP. It's only one or the other. Again, somebody else just asked that just now. You cannot get both. It's one or the other. Okay. Uh, so what I did was uh, when I applied for the EIDL, they didn't have the PPP plan anymore. So on some of my companies, I just did the EIDL. So I have five companies. Four of them do not have employees. So those four, I applied for EIDL. Fortress has employees. I applied for EIDL. However, I may reject it to get the PPP. My tax people are running through all the numbers on the PPP in order to get that, okay? Um, EIDL is a loan that is most likely going to be forgiven. Here's how it works. If they issue the money and you don't get approved for the loan, it is a grant and you're given the money. You don't have to give it back, okay? So if they issue it and it's taken about 72 hours, some of the websites say seven days. Some of my friends are getting 48 hours. Some are getting 72 hours. The website says seven days. If they loan you the, or if they give you the money, the EIDL, the 10 grand, and you don't get approved for the loan for whatever reason, you don't have to give it back. So then it's a grant. Grants are taxable. We'll see what the hell happens with that because I think there's going to be some bailouts of a whole bunch of other stuff via tax credits. Uh, can you have multiple businesses and apply? Yes. Uh, like I said, I have five. I applied for five. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to wrap this up real quick, guys. If we get the money, do we need to track the expenses? Yes. So what I would do, great question, Chris. What I would do is if you get the PPP loan, take that, open up a new bank account. So mine would be Fortress, Inc., and I'd call it my PPP loan. All my money would go into that account, and that's where I'm going to do payroll, rent, mortgages, taxes, health insurance, retirement accounts, everything, just to make it easy. Now, can you show it through profit and loss? Yeah, but to make things easy, I would just do it out of that account so I could have a bank statement. 150 grand went in, 150 thousand dollars went out. That's how I'm going to do it when I get my money. Okay. Hey, if you can get it, here's the thing. If someone, asked, and this is a great question, would you get a good idea to get EIDL and employment? Sure, why not? If I can apply for EIDL on multiple businesses, why can't you do an employment insurance? Um, I would recommend, if my, I didn't lay off any of my employees, I am hiring employees. If I laid them off, I'd be telling every single one of them, get unemployment insurance, and I would be applying for unemployment insurance as well. And the EIDL. But we're not laying anybody off. We're hiring. So we're not doing unemployment. But if you did get laid off, so you got laid off from your W-2 job, you work for Micron, and you do landscape in the summertime, apply for the EIDL for your business and unemployment for Micron. So absolutely. Uh, yes, so people with more employees, more expenses get more money. Yep because they want to keep those businesses afloat. Remember, 70% of businesses, 72% are going to be gone if they do not do this within 30 days. 72% will not reopen. Drive around, think about it. 76% of Americans are paycheck to paycheck. 72% of business owners are 30 days away from filing bankruptcy. So they're, they're doing this for a reason. All right, guys, I got to get off because I got another call in nine minutes. I got to go 
um, get ready for my next call. I appreciate all of you. Reach out. You all have my email address. Send it to me. If you're interested in um, Ed Milet's business and I, go ahead. I'm not selling anything. If you're interested in that, great time to get involved with that. It is skyrocketing, booming. Uh, again, if you make over a million dollars, you're not a felon. You have three years tax returns. You have a 680 credit score and never defaulted on a federal loan. Send me a message. I'll introduce you to Vlad. If you're under that, um, we, we cannot do the loans. We're just overwhelmed with it. If you're under that, it's super easy for you to do. You don't need us to do it anyway. It's when you get over that that you need our help. Okay? All right. See you guys later.